Oof, sounds like I'm planning a heist. We'll roll with it. I start out by drawing the plans for the tables in CAD software. You could just come up with them in your head, and I do that too, but then I draw them out in CAD software to make sure all the proportions are as I expected, etc. Next, I make a list of everything I need and step-by-step -step instructions of how to make the tables. I do this by literally imagining myself in my head, taking every step necessary to make the tables. This allows me to come up with supplies or tools that I initially wouldn't have thought would be needed. Then I go through the list and order or buy anything I don't already have. As well as other essential supplies. I check off things as I get them, and now I go to my family farm where my dad has a lot of workspace for me to take advantage of. I know a lot of people don't have a family farm to go to, and that really sucks for them. Here I'm cleaning up my workspace and laying out my supplies because I'm pretty anal about starting with a clean workspace, even though I know it's going to be a disaster by the time I'm done. Now I'm sizing up the boards. I bought these pre-cut at the hardware store to the sizes I needed, and the dudes at the hardware store actually surprisingly did a really good job. So two thumbs up, hardware store dudes. Here I'm checking that the drills attach correctly. It wasn't. Here I'm drilling a test hole. Making sure it's the right depth. Cutting a countersink for the insert. Screwing in an insert to see if the hole is big enough, and it turned out the hole was not big enough. It was way too tight, and I was already using the biggest drill bit I had on hand, so I had to make a run to the hardware store. Now I've got some bigger drill bits. I'm doing more test holes. Retrying the inserts. One of the bigger drill bits was perfect. This is what the test holes look like, and I'm gonna pee. The pee was a success. Now I'm gonna take a pencil and mark off all the holes I need to make. Right now you can see me looking at the CAD drawings on my phone. And this is me making the markings. This went on for a while. And this is what the marks look like. With the marks made, I got to work drilling all the through holes I needed. Then I took a quick break to eat my stepmom's soup. It is so choice. Now I'm setting up for and drilling the blind holes. Uh, yeah. I don't really have the best setup to make these holes. You'll see me using my phone's flashlight to try to illuminate what I'm doing. It's kind of a disaster, but I got the job done.
Now I swapped out the drill bit for a countersink bit and cut out the countersinks. This is what cutting a countersink looks like. And this is what a countersink looks like. It allows you to put a screw like this into a hole and for the head of the screw to sit flush or just under the surface of the workpiece. Now I'm screwing in the inserts, but as we'll see in a minute, this is gonna turn out to be an epic fail. Now I'm putting the tables together because they were ready to be assembled, but my holes didn't line up very well, and that meant the screws couldn't be screwed in completely, and that really sucked, and it was getting late. But I had to leave the next day, and I was not leaving without completely functioning tables, so I called it a night and went to bed to think about how to get around my shoddy workmanship. Now it's a new day, and it may be hard to tell, but I'm actually very excited to take on a new challenge. This is the main issue. With the misaligned holes, the screws were going into the inserts at an angle, and then they would get jammed into the inserts, so when I tried to screw them out, the screws didn't come out, they would just pull the inserts out. So to get the screws out, I had to grab the inserts with pliers and slowly work them out. With all this jamming action, the threads for a lot of the inserts were freaked up, so I went through and cleaned them up with a tap. Captain Crunch, anyone? The plan now was to epoxy the inserts into the boards and just make the through holes much bigger so that there was more room for error during the assembly. Here's me mixing up the epoxy. Set a timer for three minutes, please. Uh, with this epoxy, after you mix it, you have about three minutes to work with it before you should leave it to cure. I managed to do four inserts every three minutes. Here's me making the bigger holes. And here's me doing an oopsie with the drill. Oh shit. That's why I have to be careful with power tools, kids. What I said. Luckily I was prepared for that kind of thing to happen and I was holding the drill hard enough not to get hurt. But but seriously, be careful. These things are no joke. Unlike my table, which I'm now nicely. trying to put together. That one can go in nicely. That one can go in nicely. This one. Here's a better view of the misalignment issue. And to solve it, I made the holes even bigger. I put some more firewood in the oven. And voila, the screws went in smoothly. Some of the boards came together pretty well. Others did not, but that's what sandpaper is for. These forging tongs were made by my great-grandfather, who I'm told was a badass blacksmith in the 40s, 50s, 60s. The more you know. So now I sanded the crap out of all the connection points to make them flush with each other. It was basically just a lot of this. And this is what we're going for, making the boards look like they came together perfectly and not like some drunk idiot screwed them together on a tugboat. There was a lot of dust and I really should have been wearing a mask, so when I say I could not wait to get some fresh air, and there were cows. Look at that big boy. I cleaned up the sanding area and then I came over to see how evenly the table stood on a flat surface, which it turned out not very. But it wasn't that bad, and I'm not totally certain that surface was perfectly flat anyway. Then I took the tables apart for a final sanding, and it was very important that I mark how they went together because a lot of these pieces are, for all intents and purposes, both identical and reversible. But after being sanded flush with each other, they will only go back together nicely in exactly the same configuration they were when they were sanded, if that makes any sense. And we're nearly done! I'm sanding all the boards and rounding all the edges. Which I do kind of like this.
just a big disclaimer, I am not a professional, so uh, if you want to judge, if you want to judge my sanding, uh, go for it. Roast me, please. And boom, that's a finished little table.